Welcome back to the nerdy news you need to know throughout the week on iHeartRadio and podcast services around the world. Because my name's Hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And you're officially listening to this very, and I mean literally, very packed episode of what, Kev? Crisis <laughs> on Infinite Podcast. Once again, Hoodie, uh... Hoodie, your son, Teddy's very excited. Yeah, he's closer that to me cat's right more here. like a, how dare you? How dare you? Not even, she's not, barely in the cat camera. There you, oh, there's just a thumb it or is. a finger. There, there you go. There's the cat. How, how dare you disturb me? Yeah. Uh, but it is literally a jam-packed episode so much that we had to punt like four stories at the last <laughs> minute. Because, and one just popped up in the chat that we probably won't talk about, unfortunately, <laughs> because there's so much news this week. Uh, but what we will talk about is Assassin's Creed Shadows getting delayed. A new game that sh- well, a sequel that will surely delight Kevin because he just beat the first one. Who's going to be Green Lantern or is the frontrunner slash is Cass? Still not sure. We're going to talk about a new Marvel trailer and finish the podcast off with some Agatha All Along, episode three. That song will never go away. It's here forever. Yeah. It is uh, It is funny because, and we'll say this obviously for the Agatha talk. There we go. Not the WandaVision talk. Moore and I, I keep saying WandaVision. He's like, you want to watch WandaVision? I'm like, no, it's not WandaVision. It's not WandaVision season. It is, but it isn't. <laughs> It's like it's like people I guess back in the day would, would call like other spinoffs, other things. Like it was it wasn't Happy Days. It was Joining Love Chachi. <laughs> sure, nah, I know Happy Days. I didn't know that was there. Are there like three like the derivative spinoffs of that? Like it's a There's grandfather so, spinoff or something? <laughs> like did you know that Family Matters is a spinoff? Of what? Perfect Strangers. Now what's Perfect because Strangers? The, <laughs> uh, it was a show with uh, the, the the guy the guy that was in Beverly Hills Cop back in the cop back back in the day. Okay. Uh, the elevator operator in that show was Harriet, and it gave mm-hmm. her her own show. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't her show. It ended up being an Urkel show. Who's in Star Wars? Which is crazy. Everything kind of fits together. It all connects. <laughs> and Family Matters, Carl Winslow. It's Carl Winslow, right? I got yeah. that right. He's on uh, Dance to the Stars. He, he's the popularity vote this season. So <laughs> It's funny. I don't know what kind of work he's got done. Maybe he just eat, eats the right thing. He does look that old. I know he's pretty old. He does, he's but he doesn't wrong. at the same time. Yeah, like, he, like, there's a young man in there, but he's just got old man <laughs> body parts, you know? Carl Winslow High. Isn't that what, show, what it's called on, um, on uh, Invincible? Uh, no, it's Reginald Van Reginald Johnson Reginald. High. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he voices the principal. Um, so but yeah, I think it's uh, this is your Dancing with the Stars podcast talk. Uh, but it is funny how it kind of just invades our TikTok because, you know, Disney owns ABC and owns it, and it's on Disney Plus now. So, like, all the people that watch all the Disney Plus TikToks, it creeps onto your feed. And you're like, oh, well, I love the lady who does rugby for Team USA, and I love Carl Winslow. So I was wondering why, why they took it off of um, ABC and put it exclusively on Disney Plus. I guess people kind of got tired of it after a while. Yeah, I, don't know. I think it is on ABC still. I just think it simulcast on on, uh, oh, so it's on it's alive. Disney Plus. Just upload I it. think, as far oh, as wow. I know. Um, but it is a interesting note you said there is that Dizzy kind of is testing with at least that show specifically live shows, live live shows, not just post the feed and unlock it at nine o'clock. I remember a few years ago they had like a, a, D, a Washington D.C. theme dancing with the stars with local media personalities. I they still have that. Get, hope one day you get picked. I just have to wait till we get through enough people, and eventually they'll <laughs> have to put me in it because because the stations are involved. So I'll be there with pom poms and enough people to, to spend you know, on my belly. I want to. I don't know how long <laughs> it is, but it's definitely probably not as long as like the normal TV season. But I'm like before and after. I'm so limber. But they, so <laughs> the, 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 this is a tangent. But I saw same thing. With, uh, I saw Reginald Vin Johnson. He did his after his day after the dance. They just have two guys with massage guns just massaging his legs and be like, "It's okay." And he's going, "Ah!" <laughs> but he's no spring chicken, so I'm pretty sure he needs that. Yeah, um, but uh, you can see everything we're talking about. So much more, uh, like we say always. Hot ninety nine five dot com slash crisis crew. You can stay up to that date on that nerdy news and need to know at infinite underscore pods. Or, Kevin, where can they be part of the conversation and kind of steer where the conversation is going uh, when we record the podcast live? Uh, we, you can come to twitch.tv slash infinite underscore pods twice a week to join us live. But if you don't have time for that, we mm-hmm. understand. We mm-hmm. have another option for you. YouTube.com slash infinite underscore pods mm-hmm. has all our episodes up there uploaded from 20... 
seven nineteen mm-hmm. or so. Mm-hmm. On to now, so you can catch up all the things you may have missed if you were in a coma for four years. Exactly. So join us there. Like subscribe and join us. We got you. There's like two episodes every week. Yeah, there are three rare occasions there were. Rare, rare, rare occasions. Rare, rare, rare. Remember when we first thought we were going to do like like news updates? Every like, day. Like, like, no, we need work-life balance. <laughs> Kevin's got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I um, But we always start the podcast properly with what you doing, where we talk about the shows and movies we've been watching, games we've been playing, lives we've been living. And because it is Thursday, yep, boy, gets to go first and I am happy to say I finished two things this week. One, my homework. No, just kidding. <laughs> One, uh, the Chucky series, or at least it caught up to, we're waiting to see if it gets another season. Uh, enjoyed it. I do think uh, where it will go next in the season, who knows? But the show is kind of like peak child's play, Chucky of everything. I'm um, saying anything from the season. My memory told me last week he's got he got old. Like, why is it? Why, how's how's the doll aging? It's, um, it's called voodoo, Kevin. What you don't realize is child's play is all about voodoo. Dumbala. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Voodoo, voodoo Mama, Mama Juju. Juju. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we were on the same play. We knew we were going there for. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It's definitely a good spooky show. And then obviously, you know, we have Agatha all along, which is. An even better spooky show, I think, because it was made curated for Halloween. It's supposed to wrap up the day before Halloween, or yeah, the day before week or day before yeah, Halloween. Yeah. Which wait, wait, so the thirtieth? I think it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Okay, I guess technically, if they do the oh no, it's September. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Okay, at nine p.m. Technically, all right. Technically, I'm gonna watch it on Halloween though. Most likely, those last two episodes. Yeah, I think I, I think I'll watch. The next to last, the penultimate one on the thirtieth, and then mm-hmm. watch the final on Halloween. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but but the real thing is, I beat Star Wars Outlaws. I finished oh. it finally. Um, maybe it took a little bit longer than I should have. Thirty five hours in, thanks to the little uh, game save that tells me. Um, my maximize with Crimson Dawn. The Pikes go f them. Um, but I think overall, I had a good time. Um, updated score, I'd give it like a seven and a half. Out of ten, Nixes or whatever species Nix was, I forgot what they said he was. Um, because he's a bitch. <laughs> just, just a lot of bugs still. You know, we still haven't gotten an update. They said there is an update on the way, but who knows when that's going to happen? And it'll lead to news that we're talking about in about six minutes from now. Um, it was fun. It just it felt like it was missing. Pe- like it needed a um, another smooth over of the draft because yeah. Kevin, you. Mind if I spoil it for you a little bit? Um, or, the the ADHD will kick in. I forget. Like, all right, cool. Um, like <laughs> the game, and this is what it is. It leads to a big heist, and so like the main middle third of the game is recruit people. You're like, all right, cool. And we kind of had this experience with Jedi Fallen Order more than Jedi Survivor, where you got Marin. Yeah. You know, you got everybody on the ship too. Um, is I felt way more connected to the Jedi. Fallen Order Survivor crew, like, it, and it's night and day. Like, you're like, I don't care about these people. I, I like did their missions, and they don't talk to me at all. They don't interact with me at all. They don't go off the ship. Yeah, I felt like that. Um, I put a spoiler warning up for, for a second, mm-hmm. just for, for anybody else. But yeah, I felt like that, like, very early in the game, when uh, like the first mission you do, and they end up you actually broke out a member of the Rebel Alliance, mm-hmm. and like, come join us, you can help us. He's like, no, nah, I'm really a pay. I'm like, well, let's. That's not how Star Wars works. I'm supposed to like, now I don't like you. <laughs> I'm controlling you, but I don't like you at all. <laughs> yeah, and, and I like the character. I just think this game needed, and this probably will lead to what we're going to talk about. Um, like, there was so much that was like, oh, you could have like put a little more effort on that, and it would have hit, hit me. Love KVS, and I, I hope she doesn't go the way of Iden Versio, where they're kind of just forgotten. You know, we kind of talked about Star Wars video game characters. You know, you have Star Killer, Cal Kestis as like your top ranks, and then Kyle Katarn. Uh, and then I feel like Ida Versio has kind of been forgotten just because of how the video game went. But um, so the heist goes off, and the heist is like, you're like, all right, cool. Well, the fir- in the beginning of the game, you failed the heist. So obviously, we're going to succeed on the heist this time. You don't really, which is weird. And it's like, okay. So it's kind of, I want to say it's like Mass Effect, because Mass Effect. It depends on how you play the game, whether you actually succeed in the final mission or not. So I guess it's kind of like that, but if it's no way, it's like this is no way to beat it. You're supposed to fail, basically. Yeah, and and the wild thing is, there's a, there's a, a moment in the end game where you're like, oh, we need recruits. Who's gonna save us? 
and they don't really tell you like you need to maximize your things with every like uh, syndicate before you do the final missions, but you need to because yeah. that determines what syndicate actually helps you. I had Crimson Dawn. I was like, it's cool. It's the same interactions as the other syndicates I found out, but it's just like that's really weird that you know I didn't have more than just one syndicate helping me, and it didn't really affect the game. Um, obviously, it's got DLC. I know. I think the Lando DLC comes out. I think in November. They've said so. We'll see. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that now that they've had some time to think about their choices. Um, but I think right now it definitely is a is a mid Ubisoft game. I, I, I would definitely probably wait until you either get you know a Ubisoft Plus trial or it's cheap for yeah. the holidays to buy it. Is it as mid? Because I mean, I, I had fun with it, but it was still kind of a mid game. Watch Dogs Legion. I think so too. I think you and I had so much fun. One because we got to be part, of, like try it before anyone yeah. else could. Um, but because uh, I had just, or I was planning to go to London, so I had knew knew all these places. Oh yeah, and that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, it was the sightseeing part. For you, it was just hacking everything. Um, this there really isn't like a mechanic for you to get lost in besides Sabak. Like okay. all right, you're like all right, cool, I'll play it. But then like, after a couple of rounds, you're like all right, what's the point? I'm not winning anything extra because of this. No. Um, and I think if it had those things, quality of life things, I think it really would do a lot better, but I think it will be, unfortunately, forgotten to the annals of time. Yeah, it sucks, too, because we, we talked about that game, like I want to say, like four or five years ago. And mm-hmm. I guess it never really got out of... Maybe, maybe it needed another team. Maybe the team that developed it just wasn't the right team to do it. Yeah, maybe, I think uh, I think also like it's it's set in the Star Wars universe, and it's cool. But I don't know if it is just like Ubisoft's touch on it isn't what was needed right now in 2024. Ah, you know, okay. I think if this was unfortunately like 2016, yeah, mm-hmm. I think where we are in gaming now, even if like a couple of years ago games, it's kind of like okay. Yeah, that is, eight years because a lot of the single player gaming experiences now are like you better have a, a banging story because mm-hmm. if it's just a mid story with a mid, mid gameplay. It's not going to fly. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you think about it, Spider-Man 2, they didn't change much of the gameplay. They, they, they changed how it operated. Yeah. But they didn't change much of the gameplay. But the story was banging. So that was forgiven, basically. But that, nothing really changed besides the story. Mm. <laughs> it was <epic> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but and if, I guess my Star Wars rankings, I would still have Survivor, Jedi Fallen Order on any given day. Back floor. It depends what you want. Um, as number one, this would yeah, be low on the rankings. I would still, I would put Battlefront 2, I, I, even though I barely had a story. Um, I would put, you know, um, uh, Star, what is it? Star Wars, um, Force Unleashed. Yeah. The Force Unleashed well, games yeah. has a better story than this game does. Oh, yes, Force Unleashed game story is awesome. Of course, of course, I'm a KOTOR, a KOTOR fan. I mean, again, the, the Kakotarn story. There are a lot of cool story driven Star Wars mm. games. It sounds like this, this one kind of just say, hey, let's, let's get a, Get a rogue person, maybe they steal. Let's see what happens with that. Yeah. Like, like I said, I feel like this could have been a, a Star Wars Tom Clancy game with like another another year and a half of development. Yes, but it just wasn't that. Um, and then besides that, Brothers Bachelor Party. Sorry, we went along on that. Brothers Bachelor Party this weekend, going to Miami. So your boy won't be here for the next episode, but I'll be back next week. Uh, and tomorrow night, going to Avatar in concert. Uh, it's going to be a con- like a thing where they have a symphony playing in front of the avatar like scenes and everything more is sick so we're not sure if she's gonna go so kevin if you are free <laughs> i have an extra ticket potentially <laughs> man free is a <laughs> objective word at this point probably not because my wife's going to a game night so i got i got the kids tomorrow night okay. she, unless you have three extra tickets i well, unfortunately do not have three <laughs> extra tickets because it was for two originally uh so your boy's gonna have a solo night probably tomorrow unless more feels better Oh, why don't you um, reach out to your mom? It might be cool. Not it's too last minute for that right now. Hey, come on up. I'm gonna leave the next day, so don't stay too long. <laughs> come on up. <laughs> uh, and Avatar: The Last Airbender, the TV show. Uh, so it's gonna be great. Uh, but Kevin, what have you been doing? Sorry, <laughs> good sir. <laughs> uh, oh, it's all good. Uh, what have I been doing since uh, Monday? Um, I um. I dove right back into WWE 2K24. Uh, hey, after Monday. the Global Superstars pack came out of Jade Cargill. So, yes. Mm-hmm, among others. I had, I had to update a few factions because of the addition of Jade Cargill. They've all Carlito. changed. They have all yeah. changed. <laughs> I also had, had to update um, update some um, 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 championship belts because mm-hmm. Yeet is now uh, the mm-hmm. Intercontinental Champion, which I did not see coming. 
I'm happy he is, but I don't think he's going to be champion for long. I have a theory. That's okay. Give him the title. Move him on. I think uh, he's going to lose it back to Braun at Bad Blood when he invokes his contractual rematch. Man. Because backstage, he's going to meet, meet another brother. That's not Jimmy. And he's going to be upset that he has a belt and he doesn't. Mm. So that's going to be the end of that. Mm. 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 This is my theory. Interesting. See Interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going back into wrestling too. I've been watching the, the uh, Vince McMahon doc on Netflix, four episodes in. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? And woof, woof. Is it so? Now, wh- where would you compare it with the with the Jordan documentary? Like on the same, like obviously a different stories they're telling, but like same type of quality, yeah. I guess. The quality is great. Uh, apparently, they shot over a thousand hours of this stuff, and it took them a couple years to do it. Actually, mm-hmm. they tried to film it like a, lot, a couple years. Jordan, I think it's still during the pandemic because there's some shots in there of them. In empty arenas, basically. Okay. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And I would say it's on par with the Jordan documentary. But the Jordan documentary... Ooh. Jordan is not what you would say is a quote-unquote good person. But the stuff he did was just to win a basketball championship games. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's like it's like all in like that, that brotherhood type of thing. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a basketball team. Vince McMahon. Oof. <laughs> He's done some things. Now, have they addressed any of the modern great. stuff, or is it kind of just this was filmed and we're just releasing it? Kind of. Yeah, now? a lot of it is um, we filmed this before the allegations were released, okay. and you know, all these comments before those, before those allegations. A lot, a lot of a lot of that, like you know, hey, by the way, we did. It actually, it opens up with they that that story broke, and then he like leaves the recording, and then they kind of say, hey, by the way, he left because of this stuff right here. Right. So not a lot of that has gone into, but at the same time. Stuff that almost like foreshadowing, if that makes sense, because they go to get into stuff in the eighties. It's like, so he did that in the eighties, and then this happened. Now, interesting. Hmm. Um, a lot of the stories, because I'm a nerd, I, I kind of already knew. But at the same time, when you, when you hear it from the dog, from the dog's mouth, it's like, oh wow, oh, oh, that happened. <laughs> unsettling. <laughs> that really happened. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, I'll probably finish that off tomorrow. Um, and then other than that, I don't think I've been doing anything really much else. Have I? No. Uh, it's just right to my daughter's school. I don't want to get into that, though, because I don't want to bum anybody out. But um, other than that, uh, yeah, just right. living the dream, man. <laughs> well, let's get on into it, because we're going to talk about something that's surely going to sadden you, but then make you happy after we find after the story that's after that one, because it's time for the news. It's time. The news. First things first. First things first. I'm really- we have to talk about that. If you want to go see Joker Foley, I do next week. Your boy is actually hosting a screening. So oh, look at if that. you uh surprise you, Kevin and you, well, I mentioned to Kevin, but Kevin can't go. Uh your boy is hosting a screening uh at uh Regal Silver Spring, Regal Majestic, next week, next Wednesday, which is the I believe the third or the second. Next, next Wednesday. The second. the second. Um so if you want to go, um we'll have the link below in the description or go to hot 95com slash hoodie in this case. And uh, you can get on the list to go. Uh, see it early, two days before anyone else. See you later, Gaga, Joker, and your boy. Wear your Crisis t-shirt, sit in the front, and then just hoot and holler all the time as he talks. So I'm going to hoot and holler a lot, and I'm going to make sure whoever comes with, if you're listening to this podcast specifically, you're going to stick until the very end. Make sure you're there. I'm going to sit right next to you. I'm going to stare at you if I see you leaving the theater. <laughs> just imagine how you stand like, like the Burger King. Those old commercials. Oh, it's good. You're gonna, this is gonna be me from like the first row because I'll take I'll take the bad seat so you can have a good seat and be like, yo, I see you over there. You're leaving. You. <laughs> Crisis crew member, welcome. Uh, so if you want to go, uh, either look at the Crisis socials or mine at infinite at infinite underscore pods or at Andrew Hoodie. Click the link there. Make it a Crisis crew field trip. Hang out with me. Maybe we'll go Chick Fil A beforehand because that's what's cheap right there. <laughs> Chick, that Chick Fil A is undefeated, by the way. I it it is, no and you know you, the the key thing is you park your mobile order. It's ready by the time you get from the parking garage exactly. to the Chick Fil A. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> but anyway, the real first news story here is Assassin's Creed Shadows has been delayed. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> surprise! Shout it! <laughs> yeah, a video game was delayed. How about that? <laughs> so, Kevin, <laughs> as you are the resident Assassin's Creed expert, you practically have beaten every one, every main one, at least, yeah. as far as our knowledge. What's going on with Assassin's Creed one. Shadows? Um, so according to an article on IGN, 
In a note to the investor community, Ubisoft said that while Assassin's Creed Shadows was feature complete, the learnings from the release of Star Wars Outlaws led us to provide additional time to further further polish the title. Star Wars Outlaws had a softer launch than expected. So it's kind of um like we were saying before, Star Wars Outlaws needed something. Mm-hmm. It needed mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what that something is, whether it's tangible or not. But instead of risking the same thing happening, which I was afraid of actually, uh, with Assassin's Creed um, um, uh, Shadows. Mirage. Mirage, yeah. Sorry. Or Mirage before <laughs> Shadows now, yeah. Yeah. Um, instead of risking the same thing with Assassin's Creed, said, let's, let's take a bump on our biggest IP mm-hmm. and let's make sure we got this down and not just disappoint an entire franchise. Who's honestly, um, I'm not in this, in this majority, but since Origins and the way they've switched to gameplay, not a lot of people are a fan of it. Mm-hmm. I think it's fine, but it's already kind of a divided fan. So let's, let's, let's take some time with it. And I think this is actually a good idea. Um, it's, it doesn't feel like it's, it's as hopeless as Suicide Squad was. We were like, oh, shoot. hope <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that they realized something that something was off with Star Wars, and they're going to try to rectify it with Assassin's Creed. Yeah, like, I mean, a f- five, five-ish months. Re- yeah, five months, essentially. Uh, delay isn't too bad. I think, one, it sucks for me because your boy, your boy drafted it in the fantasy league. So that's the main yeah. thing that sucks. Um, but I do think it, it kind of, like, it puts a weird end statement on the year for Ubisoft. You know, you had Prince of Persia yeah. Lost Crown that came out in the beginning of the year, January, January, February time, which really good, but no one's played it. And then you have Star Wars Outlaws, which, you know, is a Star Wars game. But didn't do too hot, and I think that's obviously Ubisoft following suit of like, all right, something's going on. We need to get our cards are in order, and like this game needs to be ready. And we've talked about this every video game that comes out, minus a Nintendo game, uh, always has bugs at launch, even if it is a single player game like you know Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah. Um, I think you know it coming out on Steam the same day. It's great for money wise. Yeah, apparently Ubisoft stock is at an all time low. This probably doesn't help, uh, so it's probably even lower and even all time lower. Is it time to buy? I mean, <laughs> I, this isn't a money suggestion, but you know, maybe look it up. Oh, you like stocks, maybe. Um, yeah, Kevin, you look up how much it is, I guess. Um, but I do, th- you know, any uh, a good a delayed game can always be a good game, but a game that comes out and is bad is forever going to be bad and tainted. It can always come back, like Cyberpunk, um, but sometimes not. Um, but it is interesting that you know this game getting delayed in 2025, which leads into our next story, which we kind of did this to go two hand in hand, both of Kevin's favorite games in the past like five years of Assassin's yeah. Creed franchise and the flip side. Kevin, what games coming out in 2025? We now found out. Oh shoot! Let me find the, uh, find the. Um, I lost my thing. It, it was announced. That's okay uh, because <laughs> Ghosts of Yote, uh, yes. aka the sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. Is is coming out in 2025, and it looked good, and it' going to be eating Assassin's Creed Shadows as lunch, essentially. <laughs> and that's going to be interesting. I remember I said a couple of weeks ago, I'm afraid I'm not going to enjoy Assassin's Creed as much because I literally just finished mm-hmm, Ghost mm-hmm, of Tsushima. Mm-hmm. So now it's like now they come out in the same year. It's like ooh, um, it's kind of the same concept of a game. Honestly, mm-hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not saying that Sucker Punch ripped uh, Ubisoft off. Because it's not a guy sitting in a time. In a, well, I mean, time it, technically, they did it before <laughs> before Ubisoft did it. Because Susanma came out what four years ago, as of now, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so that's going to be a, 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 a definitely a challenge for Ubisoft because we have already seen what Ghosts is. Um, I I do think that they took a step back with Valhalla from Origins and Odyssey. I was hoping this would be a step forward, but to be honest. I mean, since Grand Theft Auto V, a lot of people have tried the dual main character mm-hmm. um, trope. It's not, it's not great. I want to say. Yeah, I I think it obviously it depends, and I think it's more of a investment on characters. I think Grand Theft Auto did very well with it because those were Trevor mainly was the zany character. Franklin was kind of your base character, and Michael was kind of your like old gangster. I think that worked out well. I think for uh, Assassin's Creed, 
you know, there's con- people complaining a little bit already about accuracies, but it's a video game. It's historical fiction more than anything else. You remember, the Pope yeah. was the bad guy in uh, Assassin's Creed 2. I killed so, so many Popes in Assassin's Creed. I killed so many Popes, oh, Papal people <laughs> in the Assassin's Creed game. Papal people. Um, but I think to have this game come out, you know, it says 2025, so no confirmed, confirmed date. You oh, know, Assassin's, date yeah. Assassin's Creed has February. I think it'll be interesting is if you have a PlayStation, obviously Ghosts of Yote is the call up the Shushima. That's a lot. Shushima. Um, you're probably more invested in playing that. If you have an Xbox, you're probably going to play Assassin's Creed Shadows. So that'll be interesting sales wise, how that does. Um, but Kevin, gameplay wise, kind of similar or to a degree. You can I would say see Ghost of Tsushima uses every button on the control. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, yeah. Every button has assigned something. You, you switch between different um, throwables, between like gas bombs and darts and poisons. Um, Assassin's Creed is more just block, parry, sneaky stab, or I guess with this one, full out fight. Mm-hmm. So again, block, parry, and and parkour. So I, I'll I'll. The gameplay is a little different because the other thing is that Ghost is more based on the old school samurai movies from like the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the fights are a little bit more deliberate. They're not as frantic as Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. So the the gameplay is different when you get into it. But on the surface, it's a game about samurais in Japan and another game about samurais in Japan. Yeah. So it's it's kind of hard. And and we're kind of saying this because you already know next year it's going to happen. There's going to be a comparison between everything, especially if at any point Assassin's Creed Shadows goes to some of the same locations that are either yeah. Shusima or Yote. Obviously, I you know timeline wise, they're all on different things. Yote takes place 300 years after Shusima, so it's not a direct, direct sequel. It's a new character um, as well. Um, but I think it's 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 kind of like we've talked about with movies when you have Armageddon and it was a deep impact or whatever oh, yeah. <laughs> come out in the same year or relatively the same year. You're gonna pick one and then the other one you're like that's like that one you know the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a rough thing to to for Ubisoft to overcome. So this I I don't I hate to say it I don't think this game's gonna be as great as Valhalla, Odyssey, and Origins was received mm-hmm. originally. Like I think. I think all those games either got nines or high eights. I think this game's going to be a high seven or a low eight. I don't think yeah. it's going to be that epic level of game. I I think it is interesting, too, that uh, for me, at least, you could speak on it, too. I never really connected to, to Ivor as much as I did as um, Bayek and, and Cassandra. Cass- Cassandra. I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know if that's a person. was more of like those characters had personality. It was Ivor was kind of just a stoic brute. Whatever, yeah. uh, either you know, either version yeah. of the character. Yeah, so. the version exactly. Yeah. Um, but oh. I, I think that's, I think that is what they need. Uh, yeah, Yote is a new game here. It, it's the Ghost franchise, really, from Sucker Punch. Nintendo Mike says, is Yote a different game than uh, Tsushima? But it's the same. It's kind of like Assassin's Creed Two to Sa- Brotherhood to Assassin's Creed Three. Same franchise, same mechanics. But different area, different characters. The, the, the other thing too is um, Ghost of Tsushima is also historical fiction because mm-hmm. what happened in Tsushima uh, actually happened. Now, what happened didn't happen. What happened in the video game, but there was an invasion of, of the Mongols to Tsushima Island. Whenever that time period it was, that actually mm-hmm. did happen. It just didn't happen. A guy named uh, just you know Rex Shop basically got <laughs> yeah. out of there. That, that part it? didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but it'll be interesting to see in twenty twenty five. It's really stacked. Our game draft next year is going to be wild because it's going to be like, thing what are you picking? With is GTA 6. Yeah, we know it's coming out next year. And uh, as far as I can remember, I mean, that's why Rockstar is very intentional uh, based on its releasing things and not overdoing things where we've only had one trailer for GTA 6. It's going to come out. When it say it's coming out, it's coming out unless some yeah. force of God like a pandemic delays it, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, and I mean, if I'm a game developer, I'm like calling everybody. Like, when is this game coming out? Well, that's what as far away from it. As yeah, I, like, that's why I think a lot of games are coming out early, like through yeah. March, or we know a lot of games are coming out in March because they're like, "Oh, well, Grand Theft Auto surely isn't going to release," you know, in February because that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it's usually a fall game. I've been also, I've been I did the uh, release for. I think four. No, no, no. Grand Theft Auto Five. I think that was a fall release. 
I can't remember what four was a fall release or not, but I know three was. So mm. sometimes it usually has a fall release game. San Andreas was a fall release game too. That's what I'm thinking mm. about. So maybe the fall for for the holiday rush and the next year, but man, if, 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 if I'm if I'm anybody, I'm like when when thank you very much. Please tell us, and then we'll them. move. Like it'll be interesting if we have any like we know release dates. GTA says, "Oh, here it comes," and then you just see the mass exodus the next day of we're moving dates, we're moving dates. You know why? <laughs> to polish the game. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Little Mike said GTA is is is, is 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 least looking forward to game of the year. I'm I'm, I'm going to say. I understand where you're coming from. I respect that, but I think this one's going to be bigger than the previous ones because they're focusing on the story again. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Just like can't, I think with Rockstar, and I know this wasn't really a new story, but more of us talking about is yeah. will they really still have the sauce? Because I think with Red Dead, and I know they're two different things, but same company to a degree. Um, really, everyone praises. You know, it looks great. Oh my god, this is yeah. peak gaming. That was you know. Five years ago, or something like crazy. that. Five, uh, five, five six, dead. five, six years ago. Um, but everyone's like, the story's so long, the story's so boring. Oh, this is too real. Grand Theft Auto has you know, always been uh, surreal and just being having fun with the world. I yeah. think it really is. All right, what is what are they push? Usually, they also have been more of a this is gaming slash this is what's next for gaming. Um, GT Online came, you know, hot off of with Fortnite and everything going on. Yeah. Um, which has been carrying the game for 13, 12 years, 12 ish years, probably by the time Ridiculous. six comes out. Um, but it'll be interesting to see, like, can they keep the hustle? I mean, obviously, their track record has been yes. They always, they always come with the goods. But will six come with the goods? We'll have to find out next year. We'll find out. Um, I'm excited about it. Now, now I'm an old fart playing. I remember, I remember when I used to be a young spry. I used to be a freshman playing the five. When I was a lad. It was top down view. Damn Wasn't it! Really nonsense. <laughs> uh, but Kevin, we also have to talk about something else coming out in 2025 because we just got the newest trailer for The Last of Us season two, the show, not the game. <laughs> I, I am. Um... I'm waiting with bated breath for this season. I haven't mm. watched the trailer yet. I'm actually going to pop it on and just watch it while, while we're talking about it right now. Mm-hmm. Because if this follows what happens in the game... It's a red wedding. Lie. It's a red wedding. <laughs> it's, it's red wedding adjacent. It really is. <laughs> um, so obviously, uh, the song, if you're watching the trailer with us, uh, is Pearl Jam's Future Days, uh, which is great because you know, Pearl Jam, I love it, Seattle. Um, but um, I think The Last of Us show, for me... Was what really hooked me in the franchise. I'm about to play the game for the first time ever fully uh, for Halloween. Just because it feels a spooky game, spooky time. It worked out with Outlaws just finishing up. Um, so I'm going to be ready for this story <laughs> right when it comes out in 2025. They didn't say when like specifically, but last time it came out, I think it was end of January and February. Maybe around then. Uh, who knows? I mean, us getting it. It is Last of Us Day. Uh, this day, canonically in the games, is like the outbreak day, essentially. When everything well, it's changed. a cloudy day. I mean, I hope that it uh, it's a very much. Seattle day uh, <laughs> where the game takes place. Um, but the trailer, you can see, uh, I'm watching it. Uh, you'll see in the video version of the podcast after youtube.com slash info underscore pods. It pretty much is following a lot of the beats from the second video game, Last of Us Part Two. Um, but the interesting thing is, Craig Mason, the creator or the head writer, creator, producer of the show uh, with Neil Druckmann, um, has said that. We're going to split it up into two seasons. So it'll just be interesting to see where they split it. Is that thing that happens where they split it? And then the second part is the back half of that game. We'll find out for season three. I mean, that's smart because, I mean, the average of story, the story of video game is, is at least 40 hours. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Still need to rush through this for 10 episodes. Yeah. I mean, There's no reason to do it. There's, what's, with the, what's the last of us? The story is so deep that you could really. You know, the opening of the, of the first game could have been two episodes. Could have been mm-hmm. three episodes if you really wanted to. Um, now, when referencing that thing that happens in this game, um, I am, I hate to say I'm exciting. It sounds like I'm very, just very morbid. I'm interested to see the reaction of the next day. Yeah, I think I think really that's going to be, that's going to be your true tell of like how streaming is in 2024. Because, you know, that the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones was nine years ago or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Off the top of my head. Um, but it'll be interesting that this is the, that, but in video game form. 
of everyone's like, I love Pedro Pascal. Can't wait to see him in the new season. And Kevin's over here like, <laughs> don't get comfortable. The Red Wedding aired uh, June 2nd, 2013. So Damn, almost man. 11 years, 11 years ago. Um, That's insane. Yeah. That's I, 11 years that ago. This is like whatever the premiere comes out. I don't know. If, maybe it's every episode. This is when live tweeting comes back because I feel yeah. like live tweeting isn't as much as I thought this that isn't much of a thing as it was eight six years ago you know pre-pandemic because everyone's watching on different times it wasn't like oh arrows on we're gonna live tweet arrow which we did oh, notoriously the, for our podcast the good old days, the good old days. <laughs> uh, kevin you have to get home and live tweet it damn it you have to <laughs> we got 400 likes on a, on a tweet awesome we have to keep going um but yeah i'm excited for it i think it will be it's gonna be sad but uh, now is the time to play the games. They're probably on sale now too because the remastered or part one remastered came out uh, and last year, and part two's been out for a while, so they're probably on sale now. Oh, two is um, I'm interested to see the growth of uh, I can't remember her name, but uh, Bella Ramsey. That, yeah, see, seeing the growth of her. They uh, moving them. Forward, they. I'm sorry about mm-hmm. that. Okay. Seeing the growth of, of them when they um, as they grow into this role because we first saw them. She they. They were them the in Game of Thrones, king, yeah. The Bear King or the Bear Queen? Bear Queen, mm-hmm. And that, again, that was at least eight years ago at this point because mm-hmm. the Red Wedding was 13. That, that, that's crazy yeah. to me. I love that uh, HBO's, uh, Max's TikTok's kind of been fire. The other the other day they had uh, the Penguin intro, but it, ha- it was to the Sopranos theme. That was awesome. And that was dope. And then the, the other day they released an interview with uh, Bella Ramsey and Pedro, and they're like, yeah, we're Pedro, Basca- Pedro Rascal. Pedro they're two Rascal. names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if what happens happens in this series, even part one and part two, it would be great to see Bella kind of grow into the lead character. Lead character, yeah. And then really yeah. take that next step of like, all right, I've been a pivotal side character, and obviously like in kind of like a, the underling character. is kind of like the character that grows to become something bigger. But now what do, what do I now own as my, my gravitas, my presence as the main character? And then the cool thing, too, is with, with HBO, if you do go to one show, they'll bring you back for another one. Yeah. So. Uh, HBO yeah. likes you like that. They'll put you exactly. in everything. Uh, but, <laughs> Kevin, we, we have to be quick. We got to move on. We got to yeah, yeah, move on. <laughs> That's what we're talking about that. Uh, because right now the front runner for the Green Lantern series as Hal Jordan is coach from Friday Night Lights. It's Kyle Chandler. <laughs> was a full arts, clear green eyes, can't I, lose. I, I got nothing for you. I never watched that show. That show came out in like 2001, so I don't know. I, 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 just, I just know the, the, the thing. I never, I never watched it. Ah, okay. Um, but, you know, a couple weeks ago we talked about um, Josh Brolin was in the running to be uh, an older Hal Jordan for, the, for, H, for Max's Green Lantern show, Lanterns, which supposedly is supposed to feature an old Hal Jordan. A young, maybe a rookie, John Stewart, um, kind of you know your your old cop and young rookie on the police force was be gritty, um, but in this case, uh, we kind of like we're not sure what's happening. Well, according to our friends at Deadline, Chandler is currently negotiating to potentially lead the show. Now, this doesn't cement him as Hal Jordan. Nothing really cements him until we see him in a damn trailer, or James Gunn confirms it for us. Actually, is the actual thing that happens, um, but. I think we're pretty close on this being a done deal, which is good because I just want the show to happen and us to be fully in the DCU, which happens next year. Yeah. So I didn't. I knew he was. He was. He was older. Mm. I didn't know he was almost sixty. Yeah. I mean, he's 50, 59 years old. But they're definitely diving into that grizzled Green Lantern thing, mm. which I'm fine with. Totally fine with. Kyle Chandler actually is one of those actors you see him like, oh, that's the guy from the thing. I like that guy. <laughs> uh, he was in Game Night. I loved him in Game Night. He's been in Godzilla vs. Kong and Godzilla King of the Monsters. And King Kong. <laughs> and King Kong, which is very, very, very interesting. Also in Super 8 and um, Wolf of Wall Street. So he's been in a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he actually is a pretty good actor. And he kind of inhabits an, an older Hal Jordan. Like I can, I can close my eyes and see this character design as, as a drawing of Hal Jordan um, back in the day. This will be interesting to see. Um, I'm getting the vibes of Training Day in Space with this. Yeah, it, you know it'll, I mean? it'll be interesting how it works too as a superhero show because like if he is an older Hal Jordan, you expect like, all right, well, you have some of these villains that are associated with the Green Lanterns have been around potentially, like Sinestro. Oh, like, yeah. Like like how do you take it from going from a, a, a gritty ch- space a space true crime show into here's Sinestro in the yellow ring? <laughs> that and like you know, the Green Lantern canonically, one of their weaknesses is wood. 
Can't, I don't that's think that's going to... Oh, maybe it will be. We'll find some trees, you know? <laughs> oh, no. What? Trees! <laughs> I'm fine with trees, but lumber is my weakness. I didn't know. <laughs> A Home Depot. I go in there. I'm done. <laughs> Also, be interesting to see if they incorporate any of the other lantern cords in here. Red, blue. Yeah, I think that's definitely like a second season thing. Maybe you tease, you know, the yellow lanterns at the end of season one and they take on some, you know, parallax or some stupid thing like that, you know, in the first season. Also, be interesting to see, because I haven't heard any casting of Jon Stewart. Did that happen yet? Not yet. It is interesting that they're like, they're leading so much on the Hal Jordan casting. Yeah. Um, I I would assume it's going to be probably either a younger actor or a relatively unknown. Caleb McLaughlin would be great from Stranger Things as a young oh, John cool. Stewart. So I think that he's ready cool. to also kind of talk about characters that like have them dominate and take over the performance. It would be great for him too. No, a while ago they said that they were, it was going to be Tyrese, but that's not going to happen. Now. Now he's a little too old. I don't want. I don't <laughs> want no old John Stewart. I want a younger John Stewart. I want a young man's John Stewart. Maybe even some, some of the characters from um, Supercell. Could, I could still definitely see being, mm-hmm. a, being a John yeah. Stewart as well. Um, that way. But I would assume probably probably by the end of the year we'll have the casting for that show finalized because that seems like that's yeah. going to be the first proper. Well, I know Creature Commandos is coming out, but proper <laughs> live action uh dcu show i'm sorry creature commandos i am i am i'm probably not gonna watch i'm gonna it. watch it but it's gonna be I'm like gonna i watched watch kite man i just watched it to watch it and didn't really care what happened in it i still haven't watched harley quinn i'm just like i don't i just don't have time it's like, a lot have time. it's a lot it's okay it's okay buddy because it's also a lot because uh <laughs> guess what we gotta talk about another trailer on this damn podcast oh my God. before we get to agatha all along we're not even there yet we're 40 minutes into the damn podcast kevin you're gonna actually have to go to reaction theater for this one if that's okay no problem. I can do that. Uh, all right perfect <laughs> because the first trailer first proper Proper is the key word here to this podcast uh, for Marvel Studios Thunderbolts star. Thunderbolt star. Little star, little star. symbol there. Uh, why is it there? Well, we'll find I hope they tell us before the movie comes out. I, honestly, and like it's like the whole time, what is this star thing? Like, they never tell us. They never told us anything. They keep saying it's really cool. I'm like, what, then what is it? <laughs> Just tell me. Uh, so we've kind of seen inklings, hints, and screen grabs of this trailer since I think it was Comic Con. They first kind of showed it off. Comic Con and D23, I believe. Yeah, and D23. So the past three months, really. Um, but we finally got it. They really dropped it out of the blue on Mon- Monday. So much that we almost forgot to talk about it on this podcast. <laughs> um, oh, what is this auto mod, Kevin? Oh, I'm gonna see what it is. All what right. happened? I don't know. Someone said someone got okay. All right. Well, all right. All right. There you go. I, I got confused. Twitch Twitch did a, did a weird thing, and that's okay. Uh, but keep gotcha. the momentum going. Um, we know Florence Pugh's back as Elena. You got David Harbor back as Red Guardian. Um, they all kind of remember. You got. U.S. agent back. Yes. You got Ghost Taskmaster, uh, and then you got uh, the Val, essentially anti Nick Fury in this. So far confirmed, and Bob, a Sentry. Sentry is, is very intriguing. Um, I'm not really that familiar with Sentry. Marvel has a few Superman level heroes that they kind of put out there. A couple, mm, a couple Adam of, Warlock, um, looking at you. Uh, Marvel was another one actually. Um, so it'd be interesting to see oh, how they oh, develop. That's why I need to keep as a tracker on how long it's Kev- it's been since Kevin's mentioned Blue Marvel on this podcast. I do have a new theory about Blue Marvel. All right, well, we'll get to that maybe in Agatha. <laughs> I doubt it. No way in an Agatha. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It, 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 I, I, well, I'll say real quick. I think they're going to recast Blade and use... Um, Mahersh's uh, Blue. Yeah, Mahersh's Blue Marvel. It's just getting too old. But he, he's still in Blue Marvel over age range, though. That's just my theory. Whatever. Yeah, what, I don't know when that Blade movie's going. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's watch this trailer, and we'll talk about it. Then we'll get an Agatha all along. Okay, Kevin? Yes. All right. Count of three. One, a two, and a three. I click leave on porch. Florence Pugh with another You're iconic haircut. <laughs> she just can't fail, can she? No, she cannot. <laughs> she really can't. And David Harbour, just being David Harbour. <laughs> Harbour looking ripped. Remember, he was Hellboy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Dad. I think he's still in Russian jail, too. Sorry about the wait. Uh, it was <laughs> an important call. Highly classified. Lot of work, lot of work. Many irons in fire. You feel fulfilled? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, so full. So filled. But why do you ask this? What, uh, what brings you here? No studios test. <laughs> There is something Iconic pose, the Black it. Widow pose. <laughs> I'm a Black Widow baby. Do -do -do. Bucky, long hair baby. Bucky, hell yeah. I'm a daddy baby. Okay, I'm sorry. Throwing myself <laughs> into work was the answer. Ooh. It's got it's a exploding building in the middle of it on the, on the Marvel, any Marvel thing. Jeez, no. smart to put in the shadows. It's easier for the stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> Back. You do look for ghosts. Taskmaster looking still dumb. <laughs> yeah. Looks like one of those masks you get from Timo. Oh, oh, no. Who are you? Uh, I I'm, I'm Bob. I'm Bob. Who sent you, Bob? <laughs> Nobody. Are you all, you are all sent? Who's playing Bob now? Yeah. Everyone here has done bad things. <laughs> Shadow Ops. Robbing government labs. Is Lewis Pullman, Bill, Bill Pullman's son. Yeah, oh, from Top Gun Maverick. So, someone once has gone. Hmm. Seems familiar to an episode we just watched today. We brought up with this belief. Twelve bucks. That should be a skill on the bed. They're bad guys. <laughs> Kind of Watchmen vibes too. Plan. Oh, nice! Dishwasher. The fun is very Watchmen. That's right. But eventually, you come New character. To that there are bad guys, and there are worse guys, and nothing else. It's supposed to be Avengers. Tower. Look at you. Hmm? So oh. adorable. Bing. She's bulletproof. Whatever the bulletproof is. Bulletproof ish. Hell yeah. Old school Bucky, baby. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, like. Bucky's back. I know people have a problem with the poster being photoshopped, um, but this trailer I thought did pretty well for selling me. For this movie, really. <laughs> you know, it's funny. This is the second straight trailer. Like, I think the last trailer we got was Brave New World. Am I correct? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides Agatha, for, yeah. For a movie, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, they're, they're channeling the Winter Soldier vibe so well right now, I feel like. Yeah, I think they, they kind of <laughs> have. One, they have to because that's what people like. But also, if like, they're getting ready for the yeah. Russos to come back, they kind of got to like, hey, we have the Russo's come back. They need stuff to be good for them to come back. You yeah. know, they can't come back and it, everything's trashed. They'll fix it, but they'd rather have things be good. Uh, because this 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 seems like even the scene with all of them in that Avengers Tower esque place or the new event, the Thunderbolts Tower, I guess mm. at this point, it reminded me of the scene in Winter Soldier with um, Robert Redford and Security Council. Mm. Them all realizing, oh, you're the jerk. And yeah, like, oh, too late. And, and <laughs> you know? I, I really think you know. <laughs> Putting this movie on the on the shoulders of Florence Pugh is a smart decision. I yeah. think we've obviously we've seen Suicide Squad twice, and we've seen it, its wins and losses. And you can assume Kevin Feige's probably seen the same thing of like, hey, this is the closest thing to Suicide Squad we have with us. Obviously, with these villains coming together, um, but I think at the same time, you can you can do better. I think obviously with Taskmaster, I think Taskmaster is going to be the what, who was the first villain that died in Suicide Squad. Oh, it was like it was like Cliff Jumper or something like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I think Taskmaster is going to be like one of the first ones to go because <laughs> fortunately, Taskmaster don't talk, so you know it doesn't really do anything. Taskmaster don't talk. Shoot, uh, I gotta find out what that person's name was now. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, but you know, uh, you, <laughs> Lewis Pullman is Bill Pullman's son playing Bob, uh, aka Sentry. This was really supposed to be Steven Yoon. He had to drop out, obviously, because of scheduling. Um, but to have Sentry, like Kev said, a Superman-type hero, which I know from Marvel Snap, doing his job again, telling me who these characters Not are. Not his name. Uh, what was it? 
Slipknot. Yeah, mm-hmm, sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, never forget Slipknot, says Aaron Giles. Like, Taskmaster, I think, could die in this scene they're trying to escape this hatch room from. And you're like, okay, cool. Great. I don't need them. We got Bucky instead. Yeah. See you, bye. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think ultimately, whether it's Val testing them to come together as a team or something like that, um, I think is dope. I think it's cool to, that these are minus Yelena and, Yelena and Bucky villains and, and minor characters that will get their shine. I think it's kind of like how watching reading comics of like, oh, there's this really good, you know, we'll just say uh, U.S. agent comic you have to read. Yeah. And then all of a sudden U.S. agent's your favorite character. I think that's what this could do for these characters, hopefully. Yeah. I think speaking of U.S. agent, even though he was kind of the, the antagonist for those middle episodes of Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. He kind of redeemed himself after he killed that Falcon episode. and Winter Soldier. Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah. He he um he kind of redeemed himself. He actually helped out Bucky in the, in the last mission mm. um to and he chose to help the people in the truck instead of trying to kill um the late the the, the terrorist lady. Mm. So I, I feel like his his whole thing is going to be redemption. He wants to be seen. He he's not Captain America now. Of course, we're going to see Captain America brave from before this. He's not Captain America, but he wants to be seen as a hero because now everybody sees him as the guy who killed that person with, with, yeah. the, with the shield. On, on TV, and then also with um, with uh, with Helena leading everybody, I, I feel like that's the natural place to go because when you when you watch the first two Avengers, I won't say Infinity War too much, but the first two Avengers movies, Captain America's the leader, but Black Widow made everything happen. She's getting you know she's I mean? getting she's making the boys work, you know, like exactly. she's like you, this is what we actually got to do. Like when Cat lost his shield, she's like, "All right, drop me off, drop me off the thing, and I got the shield for Cat." Yeah, like she she's literally helping everybody. Mm-hmm. So I would love to. I I, I kind of like to see the, the switch of the same thing with this. Helena is the one to kind of get the get the boys in gear and get them where they need to go. Yeah. Um. Obviously, this is the first trailer. We'll get probably more of the story later on. Um. At one point, Baron Zemo was in this movie. I don't know if he still is. Maybe that's something they tease or something we won't know about. Um, Red Hulk obviously is Thunderbolt Ross. Maybe that's why the little star little character is next to the team. That it's Thunderbolts cause to tie him with Thunderbolt Ross at the end of Brave New World. But maybe it become. I think if, they're not going to change the title before the movie comes out. Yeah. But maybe it is when they do go to that uh, mid credits logo. It, it's Thunderbolts and then it gets crossed off or deleted and turns into Dark Avengers or something like that. And the, uh, of course, the other thing in this trailer is um, Bob Reynolds, mm-hmm. Sentry. Um, he is like a wild card at this point. Cause I don't know how they're going to bring him into this. Yeah, I so, think like right now they're kind of making it seem like he's like, um, what is it? It's like the the El- not Elseworlds, but it's like Red, not Red Sun, Superman. Um, what it's the Superman where like they've locked him in. It kind of did it in yeah. uh, Flashpoint where it, it is Flashpoint. That's what it is. Where Superman's yeah. been under lock and key, so he's really powerless, but he's just like a normal guy. So I, I'm wondering if this is going to be them trying to get him, or is it going to be eventually him saving the day for them? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Plot that's, that's my curious. I, like I said, I don't know much about Sentry, but his inclusion in this is very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, but this is coming out May 2025. Um, it is interesting uh, that Brave New World, friendly reminder, also comes out in 2025. <laughs> of course, it was the book. I knew that was going to happen. That comes out in February. Uh, so three months apart. So that would be a good tee up into the next movie to make you care more about it at the end of Brave New World. So, Are we getting one or two MC movies next year? I, th- I thought we were getting three. I'm uh, we're getting them two and then... Oh. I know we're getting a couple uh, shows next year as well. Ironheart and supposedly Wonder Man. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, Fantastic Four First Steps is... Hold on. Look it up. Uh, tentatively still July. So that July would be 20. your two-ish months after. Tentatively. Yeah, so I feel like Fantastic Four might get delayed just because I feel like there's no way they'll have everything ready by July. You but know who knows? <laughs> I think you're right because the other movie that's played for next year is Blade. It's not happening. Yeah, so move it to October Blade time or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Right around Thanksgiving because it's a, the family. Mm-hmm. First family. Have the Marvel, family come together, family, you know? Yeah, exactly. They, yeah, with, exactly. Our, with our family. <laughs> it markets um, itself. Yeah, but Brave New World and Thunderbolts will be, is a good, like Aaron Giles says, a good one two punch for 2025. Um, then Fantastic Four being, can be that more campy. It's, it's your Winter Soldier Marvel, and then here's your campier Marvel, maybe. Uh, with Fantastic yeah. Four to a degree. 
They don't, need to, they don't need to be home runs. They need to be doubles with men on base. That's what's supposed to be. Doubles with men on base. That'll get your points, baby. <laughs> get, the run in, get the run in and get on get on score position. That's all I need to do. Uh, but Kevin, I don't, I don't need tens. <laughs> let's switch it back to the normal view because it's time to talk about some Magatha all along. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we were talking about Agatha all along. <laughs> so, uh, if you, in case you missed it, both first two episodes were out last week, so you can catch a recap of that. I think it's like two episodes ago, if you want to watch that episode or listen to it. Podcast service of choice. This is episode three. It is officially called Through Many Miles, Tricks and Trials. It rhymes. I mean... I'm a bad writer when it comes to rhyme, so I, I am loving all these episode titles. Just me personally. Darn these, which is, uh, that's a fun thing, is the song from last week, which will be remixed multiple times this season, just a heads up, uh, was downloaded over a billion times <laughs> since last week, so on 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 some music services. <laughs> it, it slaps, what can you say? <laughs> it, it slaps. Uh, <laughs> so interesting thing is, um, more is sick, so I've been kind of quarantining her away. We actually watched this uh, on Disney Plus together. We, we timed it, the same thing. And she was like a half a second <laughs> behind, so I had to be like, huh. And then I heard it, and I was like, oh yeah, oh my gosh, can you believe that? <laughs> It's funny. So sometimes when we, we play our trailers, like I can hear I'm like a little bit behind. I'll pause mine real quick. Mm -hmm. Just sync up. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Synced up. Now I go. know what Hoodie's talking yeah. about. Caught up. There we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, episode, episode was 38 minutes with credits. I felt like it flew by. Uh, I honestly was like, oh, it's done already. Like that was really. I want more. <laughs> you know. Me, Mr. Busy uh, Dad, Dad over here. I'm like, this is my sweet spot. 38 mm. to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever, like, like I said, whenever I saw those run, like penguin, I was like, God dang, 109 minutes. Ah, well, all right, let's you do it. get ready. <laughs> it's gonna be closer to there a little bit. I'm not, yeah, it was an hour and nine minutes, not 109 oh, yeah. minutes, hour, 140. Yeah, that's a movie. God, gosh <laughs> darn. Um, but Kevin, did you enjoy the what happened in the episode? Minus how long it was, <laughs> yeah, spoiler free. I thought it was a great episode for character building and intenseness. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I thought it was that if, if episode one and two introduce everybody very well, this one establishes their relationships. Working them together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Aaron Giles said it best. I enjoyed the escape room vibes. This and Thunderbolts trail. I'm like, man, someone at Marvel must have watched both the escape room movies like last year or something. <laughs> you know, I've done like three or four escape rooms. I've never won. Well, you always get one of these. You're not with the right people, Kevin. That's what it is. You're not with the right people. One was my wife. Don't say that. All uh, right. Well. <laughs> the other she, she's not the wrong person. It's the other people. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the episode. More, I surprisingly liked it too, um, which is good because last week she's like, I don't know about this. And then she's like, I actually enjoyed that. Like, it was a good time, uh, which is a good litmus test for Marvel shows nowadays is if Mora watches it with us. So, at least said the same thing. She, she thought the first one was kind of slow for her. She didn't really get into it until the Richest Road song. Mm. Oh, now I get it. Oh, there's a song now? Oh, I got it yeah. now. <laughs> uh, but here's spoilers full ahead, whether you're a sadist like one Andy Drogon, or maybe you just want to figure out what's going on in the episode. We got you covered. Uh, you can pause here, come back to us. And if not, hey, you just know it's probably the last 20 minutes of the episode. It's all Agatha all along. So. Just real quick, too. This episode was um, directed by Rachel Goldberg, who apparently is doing the next two. So get used if you to like this, this one, you like the next two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we start off. Um, well, actually, no, let's get out of the way. Mephisto confirmed. <laughs> yes. Mephisto confirmed. Yes. <laughs> and I also learned something about, about, about Mephisto um, on TikTok last night. Uh, I watched, I follow a TikToker named uh, King and Queen Lion. He's a mm. really big comic book nerd. He has everything, literally everything. Okay. Apparently, Mephisto is not the devil of Marvel. He's a hell lord. He's a demon. So he's... He, He's literally like the boss of a specific section of hell, not the mm. overall devil, though. So that, that's why he can't do everything everywhere, but he can do things for the Earth's realm of hell. But can he do it all at once, Kevin? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it also heads up, uh, if you're wondering why there haven't been as many Funko Pops for this show, there's a reason. Uh, <laughs> spoilers of stuff is online, so avoid that if you can. If you see a Funko Pop, don't look at it right now. Uh, don't look at the back of it. Okay, that one, no, thank you. <laughs> or it might be fake. Who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, I think having Mephisto really confirmed is really dope. Just that, like, it exists in the MCU. Maybe it doesn't. he doesn't exist in this show. Um, you know, the rumor was 
it's played by Sasha Baron Cohen, and they're going to pop up <laughs> in Ironheart for some reason. Um, but I think just to have like, oh, yeah, that is a thing is cool. And just acknowledge, I, it, even if it doesn't boil into anything, it's cool that Kevin Feige is like, hey, just put it in there. Yeah. Damn fans have been you know, clamoring for it since the first episode of WandaVision. It, it was kind of akin to me of um, Wolverine showing up in first class. Like he's not in this movie. Don't look for him again. But he is in this world. We are, we are aware that he was around during all this stuff. He's around. Back to our movie. They're around. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the episode kicks off um, the coven coming together. Um, Mrs. Hart, aka Mrs. Davis, aka it was, was it Sharon, right? Sharon, yeah. Um, really like this is a kidnapping. I didn't sign up for this. And her really kind of realizing I, I should not have come downstairs in this in this basement party, the laundry the laundry party. <laughs> This is the reason I don't go outside. My neighbors are outside. I wait. Because I don't true. want to be dragged to the witch's road. And ultimately, we'll talk about it. Um, but I love that the coven knows Sharon doesn't have magic. Um, but they do know they'll have to go through the trials on the road. One trial for each skill. Okay. Each witch. Is Billy included in that? We'll find out. But we do have good lines of Billy of like, Billy's 100% sure his parents are asleep. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting mm-hmm. notes there. Um, Billy also does say, li- like, there's other lines throughout this episode. They're like, hmm, Billy, who really are you, Billy? What is that, your name? It's, it's not even your real name, Billy. It is, it, is it scratchy? Um, but the interesting thing is when, uh, or, sorry, his name's not Billy yet. It's still teen. We don't know if it's Billy yeah, or it not. Is teen. You're right. yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. Teen. You're right. Um, the other witches also can't hear teen's name, that he has a sigil, which is officially what it is now on him, which is a spell that hides him from the other witches of learning about him um but agatha says we can crack him open later it's like that's funny of like hey that's like to the audience that's a later problem right now we gotta figure yeah. out what's what's with our trials that's for down the road right now we're here so let's keep moving on yeah here. um i will say deborah uh kitty foreman deborah joe rep has did been doing great past three episodes standout yeah. moment of the witch's road song last week and this week of just like jeezy louisey it's my <laughs> yeah like all these things I'm like that's great that's like everyone's mom you know <laughs> like that's all you want and she's great i mean she it's also great if you're not watching that 90 show is pretty funny actually yeah which that's <laughs> they did great netflix and disney i don't know if they worked together but great synergy on their parts of having that show come out up, this, and then heartbreak heartstopper coming out at the same time <laughs> with, with joe lock I don't know what, but they did great. Um, we find out the first rule rule of the witch's road is don't step off the road. In doing so, a trial does appear. It's a fancy house that appears on a beach. Huge, tiny lies, aka we're parodying big little lies on HBO. <laughs> Oh no! I didn't even get, I didn't even catch that. That's funny. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> so another HBO. That. We're doing a lot of HBO parodies apparently in Agatha all along. I take it. Some writer left HBO and still upset. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, but they get in the house. They immediately like change all their clothes into like the fancy beach house wear. All the door handles disappear. Turns into an escape room. Essentially, <laughs> love themes of escape rooms. Um, uh, Mrs. Hart says, what a gorgeous cardstock. You know, it's expensive. Just like, man, great lines. Uh, they do have to, uh, find out, drink a bottle of Reina Rioja wine. Don't know if that is anything as far as I know, but no one's deduced that it is the name of the wine. Usually that's something that's like an Easter egg or something. If it's a real wine, it'll probably be hard to buy. Kind of how that wine from The Last of Us was. (laughs) Just curious, are you a red wine or a white wine guy? I... Am a not wine guy. Okay? That's what I am. So if I don't have to drink it, I'm not going to drink it. <laughs> Kevin also a is a not wine guy. <laughs> wine is disgusting, and I was say that to my. Di- it's disgusting. We lost all wine our wine drink. viewers. Damn it, Kevin! <laughs> our wine <laughs> listeners. Um, it's like but, medicine. But it turns out uh, we find out that uh, it's Jen is talking to Teen at one point, and that she tells Teen that you know the rumor around Agatha is that she traded her own kid for the Book of the Damned. Nobody knows what happens to the kid, but maybe he's an agent of Mephisto. <laughs> and I went, oh, and more was like, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> By the way, if you want to get a bottle of Rioja Reserve wine, um, it's on sale at Total Wine for 33 bucks. Buy it now because it's going to be very expensive in the next two days. <laughs> it's going to be sold out. <laughs> Go get it now. Go get it now. <laughs> uh, but Sharon chugs her wine and the tar- timer starts counting down. Um, turns out uh, Agatha tries to dump her drink, but it refills slowly. Eventually, it does. She drinks it eventually, kind of wrapping that up. We find out 13 is an important age for witches and magic and warlocks and all that good stuff. Uh, but Sharon's face gets swollen. So does everyone else's. Sharon's kind of the, 
I like this, the canary in the coal mine of like yeah, she drank it earlier, so that. everything happens to her first. Uh, turns out everyone's face returns to normal with her under a poison called Alewife's Revenge, which was fun. And I was like, I typed that note and it said Alewife autocorrected to Alewife. I was like, wow, that's a real word. <laughs> it's a real thing. Um, <laughs> turns out um, the symptoms are your face gets super bloaty, which is fun. I've seen a bunch of behind the scenes photos of the cast being in their makeup and seeing each other, which is fun uh, on social media. But then you hallucinate, then you pass out. Sharon references WandaVision again with Mr. Hart choking and yeah. being like, and what she, and, and it's funny because Twitter showed the clip again. It was like, uh, in that scene, Mrs. Hart was saying, stop it, stop it. But it kind of was, this is what she was really saying, was like, help him, Wanda, help him, Wanda. But it didn't happen. Since she passes out, then everyone has to go find an ingredient for a witch's, a witch's potion or for Jennifer's potion. Uh, turns out everything that sounds creepy, yeah, it's just, just like, oh, we need a dead skeleton thing. It's like, oh, we need uh, petroleum, which is zooplankton. Didn't know that, by the way. <laughs> Learned that no, today in this episode. We need honey, which is eye of nude or something like that. So, which, yeah, which was uh, funny. Honey, it, it was like bee stomach. You social bug like or something. Yeah. It was like that, yeah. <laughs> Things we have around the house. Okay. Um, but everyone starts seeing visions. Um, Lilia is in Sicily. Alice sees her mom. Uh, Jen sees like a, a butcher guy or somebody. Yeah, hers hers is very troubling. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what happened there? Yeah. Um, but then we also see uh, that Agatha eventually she's drinking things later. She sees a crib. She hears a baby noise. When she opens up the crib, it's the dark hold, which is kind of confirming dark everything hold. that happened with Jennifer when Jen said. Uh, turns out the house somehow ended up underwater. As soon as the timer breaks, the water is going to break into the room and flood them, kill them if they don't get out of there. Teen uses a sous vide to heat up the water. This is where he says, my dad loves a sous vide. Like, hmm, he loves hot things. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, I don't know. I don't own one of those. I don't know. That was a I don't, I don't know. I, I know Rob Cruz owns one of those, probably. And you know, oh, I know yeah, you yeah. know you know he owns one. Because Cruz cooks. Cruz <laughs> cooks. Damn it. <laughs> Please send a mess that. Uh, um, <laughs> this is where Agatha gives Jen a pep talk to get her, to get her to get the potion right. They need a strand of everyone's hair. Mora called it immediately. Like they didn't get Sharon's hair when they put it in the potion, which. We we'll lead to what we do. They also need a blood of teen, a drop of teen's blood. This turns the the, the potion into uh, cerulean, not chartreuse, not blue or green. That's been kind of trending with Devil Wears Prada. But once it gets to the right color, they can drink it and then get out of there. They give to Sharon right at the one second beat. Might be too late because the room floods. <laughs> this was fun that the oven opens. They're like, we have to get in there. And then I think it's Lily. I was like, I knew a witch who got tossed into one of those. It was, and I was like, hey, I love the, the witch lore we're doing here, too. Uh, they escape back onto the road. Uh, seems like everything's okay. Mrs. Hart didn't make it. <laughs> Agatha goes, <laughs> or, who's Sharon? When they refer to her as Sharon. And they hear, off, off with your head. And they're like, hell yeah, heads will roll. I love that song. <laughs> this episode was also great because I feel like everyone this is me this is my, my interpretation of watching it Agatha's kind of a cool villain right now mm-hmm. uh, because of WandaVision and because of the first two episodes this episode reminds you by the way Agatha's a jerk so yeah. the, whole, the whole time her trying to get out not drinking the wine trying to escape and just trying to cheat her way down the richest world you can see it everybody's like dude you can't cheat in this you brought us here you yeah. gotta go through with everything so I, I love I love that interpretation of that and also um, just how Everybody's kind of looking at team with that white eye, like, hmm, who are mm, you? Who are you? We use your blood. We're going to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so this leads to, obviously, it was funny. The episode ended, and Morris said, because they didn't use her hair. I literally heard her from the other room. And uh, who knows? She's, she's invested. This is awesome. <laughs> she's invested, which is great. Um, who knows if Sharon is dead? We'll find out truly in the next episode, because it ended abruptly there. Uh, kind of yeah. wanted more. That's okay. Um, but Kevin, do you think. I kind of had these questions with Mora. Um, do you think we're losing somebody every episode, and that's the vibe we're getting now along the trials, or do you think it is she just died because she wasn't a witch? I think it's that because it, it was supposed to be Ari Plaza's character and mm-hmm. not her. Mm-hmm. So maybe the penalty was like, oh, so she bought this person that had nothing to do with this. Now she's dead. Yeah, that's on your hands now. Deal with it. So I, I, I hope that's not what I mean. I'm not, I won't be upset if somebody along the way dies towards the end of the show, but because I really love all the characters right now, but. 
I don't think it's going to be the the um, Willy Wonka effect where every time he goes somewhere new, <laughs> every trial a new someone gonna, gets stuck in a tube. Yeah, and he's like Balupas. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it's going to be that. No, I hope not. So I hope not. <laughs> um, but Kevin, what do you think comes next? What are you what do you got predicting wise now that we are three episodes in out of nine? I feel like the next trial should be um, what's her name? The older the older witch, uh, Lilia. Uh, Lilia. Because she's been kind of having these, for lack of a better term, freak out moments mm-hmm. since episode one, well, episode two when we saw her. It's like, get over there. Oh, stop. Ah. And then we see what she was going through. Obviously, that was a, I don't know if it was her mother or her, or her daughter that was dead, basically sitting up at the table. So I feel like exploring what the heck is going on with her next would yeah. be interesting. Well, I, her I, magic wasn't poison magic, it's some, some kind of different type of magic. I think it's also cool that we're at a different, we, we're at a different, um, like one, it'll be one person's trial, but we're gonna learn a lot more about someone too at the same time. Yeah. Um, really, like this one was Jen's trial, but we learned a little bit more about everybody. So, we're like, all right, what do we learn about everyone else in the next trial? That is it, you know, Lilia's or is it Alice's? With I'm assuming that'll probably be the music based one to a degree. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely would be that. Um, I I, I, I want to say also, I, I'm not going to uh, pr- attempt to pronounce her name because I'm just don't want to b- butcher it. But um, Vertigo, the lady from SNL, I thought she did a great job in this, in this episode as well. Um, it, it, it's uh, Okuli. Oh, e- Ego Nuotum? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm bad at that. So I thought she did a great job in this episode as well. Um, kind of being that um, secondary, like, Agatha, come on, get it together. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Like, yeah. I, I, loved, I loved her in that, in that role. And um, I'm also hoping that we continue to peel the onion of what teen is. I like how it, it kind of started with Agatha in the second episode. It continued here mm-hmm. with Legend of Mephisto. And I was like, okay, let's keep peeling these layers back. Who this person is? Yeah, I think that's that's the beauty of this show is that it is, you know, an onion layer peeling show of like, all right, what what is this? Who is this? And then it, it's kind of the show's like, all right, now I'm going to go back and be like, this makes sense and everything. Obviously, this, his powers and stuff won't really culminate until probably like the penultimate episode or something yeah. like that. Um, but if we're on the right track, um, we would say have Alice's trial. We would have Lilia's trial. So that's four and five. You have the Green Witch's trial, which is six. You have Agatha's trial, which is seven, eight, and yeah. nine is your finale, your final two episodes. There have been rumblings that um, Teen is actually not um, Tommy or Billy, that mm. he's like Nightmare, which is like Mephisto's quote unquote. The Batman to his the Robin to his Batman, yeah, basically. So that'd be interesting if, if they just go out and start introducing do this whole thing to introduce a whole new character that yeah. we haven't seen yet as a prelude to the big guy. <laughs> um, I will say though, just kind of wrapping it up though, is whatever you see on social media, don't believe it at first until you watch the actual episode because, like, there was contact out of context things. It was like it was Lilia's vision, it was like, Death is here, this is death and con. I'm like, I don't even know who that was. She was there for like a hot half second well, and then disappeared. Second, yeah. You know, like watch, watch the show. Just watch, watch the, the show, show, then enjoy the social media and enjoy the party of social media because then you're like, wait, what happened? This is confusing. That did not happen. My expectations changed. The other thing I'm kind of excited about, if it end, it doesn't end up being Nightmare, um, Nightmare is a major villain to Ghost Rider. So if, if this is all like, like this would be really cool to bring. How do you like? Here, here comes the dark world of so of um, the Marvel MCU. We gave you, we gave you um, a Werewolf by Night last year. Now we're going in deeper. Yeah, uh, come I, on with me. I, <laughs> I think we're gonna stick with the he will become Wiccan as a moniker, not the character, or will become that. I've, I've read that too. Yeah, character. I, I think I'm gonna stick with that one. Just because I think the, the Wanda's kids thing as a whole, like, how does that happen until you get through Secret Wars, I think. And then you streamline it, then you have that. Um, but I think him becoming Wiccan, whoever he is, becomes Wiccan at the end of this, though. I also am here. I hope that if if it does happen, when we get a, a Young Avengers, I can't wait for him to interact with um, with um, Hawkeye and Miss Marvel because I think it's going to be just... Yeah, I mean, if anything, like <laughs> Young Avengers is going to be popped off because we're like, damn, these char- like the, all these characters are the highlight characters exactly. of their most recent <laughs> movies or whatever they were in. So we'll find out. Um, but let us know what you think of Agatha all along. Maybe it's the Last of Us trailer or the Thunderbolts trailer or everything else we talked about in this jam-packed episode at infinite underscore pods on the Instagram or the X go and give it to you. Or you can go to hot995.com slash crisis crew. Stay up to date with that nerdy news you need to know or be part of the conversation. 
twitch.tv or youtube.com slash infinite underscore pods as well. But also, friendly reminder, we can have a crisis field trip next week. If you go to hot995.com slash hoodie um, or look at our, any of our socials, you can go see Joker Foley I do early. Your boy's hosting the screening. So you want to go, uh, go to any social media we've mentioned today. Click on the link there, get in there, and we'll hang out next week and get some Chick-fil-A, get some popcorn. I'll give you the better seat if there's a better seat. So, Popcorn at that movie theater, that actually is pretty good. So I would recommend Kevin loves it, video. but he ain't coming now. <laughs> um, but, damn it. <laughs> but we hope you have a great weekend. Uh, it is the last weekend of September, so embrace it and uh, get ready for Halloween because come next week, Kevin, that Halloween border better be ready. All Hallows Eve. <laughs> all Hallows Month. All month long. But as always, my name is a hoodie. And I'm Kevin. And you are officially have listened to this jam-packed, now Mephisto-filled episode of what, Kevin? Crisis. On Infinite Podcast. Mephisto's back. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs>